Photo Booth business owners, welcome back to another podcast. Today, I have a very special guest. This man has, uh, he's achieved a lot. He's been in the industry for over eight years, has done hundreds of events, and is constantly scaling his business. And guess what? He's on social media, guys. So you can soak up a lot of game from the one and only Hustle with Drew. How are you doing, sir? Great, man. Can't believe it. This is overdue, man. I'm excited to be here. Um, yeah, this is going to be a good one. It's, it's awesome, Drew. I think that, it, like you said, it, it took us long enough. But we're finally here. And today we're going to pick your brain, Drew, because you're a wealth of knowledge. I've come across your videos, and there's always a video that stands out to me, whether it's just you being humorous or you diving into like showing the people tough love, like, hey, the work needs doing, yeah. get it done. But before we go into that, I just want folks to get a little bit about, uh, get to know you a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit of your background, like where, you, what background did you come from? Whether is it the medical field? Can you just a little uh, yeah. introduction? Yeah, man. I've, um, as you can tell from the name of my channel, Hustle with Drew, always have been an entrepreneur, even from a young age, right? I just always loved the fact that I could make the amount of money that I wanted to, right? Mm. I never wanted to have a job. So, you know, my photo booth journey started nine years ago. Um, literally, I saw a photo booth at a wedding. And back then, man, nine years ago, the photo booths don't look like they do now. Um, you know, so back then I was a filmmaker making videos for, for car companies and um, saw a photo booth, saw the guy eating tacos, asked him a question, which I probably shouldn't have asked. Hey, it's like, how much are you making? And he goes, uh, about a thousand bucks. I was like, for how long? He goes, three hours. I gave him a deal. And I was like, oh, what? So I look in the photo booth, bro. I see the camera that I actually have. My buddy had the printer and I was like, light bulb went off. And I was like, we got to build our own photo booth. So that's how we started. That's how we, we got in the game. So constantly on the search for a way to just make some money, yep. led you talking to the taco guy. Yep. And then that conversation sparked up and manifested where you're at here today. But it took a lot of work to get here, right? Yep. So Drew, what can you tell me about diving into the business? What, what do a lot of people hype up and really doesn't pan out that way? So you started, you were excited. Tell me about your first year in business. Yeah, man, I started off like most people start, just kind of treating it like a side hustle, just trying to do a couple of events because I was good. I didn't need the money. It was kind of just like extra income. Um, so I think, man, the first year I, I'd, probably say we made maybe 25, 30,000 bucks. Part-time. Part-time. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, totally different game, man. Like nowadays, like back then, all you needed was a Craigslist account <laughs> and you can get booked pretty much every single weekend, but it's a totally different um, game now. But, but yeah, I, I love the evolution of the photo booths, you know, um, I'm team iPad because it's portable, simple to use. Nice. And um, yeah, that's all we do. We just straightly do iPad booths now. So because you've been in the industry for so long, right? Over eight years. When you first got started, how much has it changed as far as the pay rate per service? I understand that back in the day, people were making crazy amount of money in this industry just because of the supply and the demand, right? Mm -hmm. So moving, you know, just giving your experience for those last eight years, how much has it shifted and what are you doing to stay relevant with your pricing? Great question. So I've never been a premium priced rental. Okay. My mindset's always been, let me have an affordable rate. Let me stay busy. Let me get experience. Let me build my clientele. So I've never been that thousand dollars per event. We've always been kind of, you know, on the cheaper end. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started man, the first year, we, we were doing events for like 250, mm -hmm. undercutting everybody. And I know a lot of people are like, ah, that's bad for the business, bad for the industry. But mm -hmm. back then it was just a passion thing, you know, and we were doing events for people that are having a party in their backyard. Um, but we are able to charge more now because we have more experience okay. and we're providing a lot more because back then, man, it was bad, man. Our printer, literally two and a half minutes to print. Okay. We were cutting the photos <laughs> with scissors. So like our prices were a reflection of our equipment, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, now it's, it's totally, totally different. I'm not sure if I answered your question, but, um, yeah. but yeah, what was your question again? No, no, that, so my question was. How has it changed as far as people charging a lot of money back then as photo booth businesses to now where everyone can easily have access to the equipment, set up a business, set up a website, and then undercut the, the people in the industry, right? Yeah. So now it's like we are in a constant struggle to stay relevant and also to be well compensated for the time that we think we are worth. Got it. Right. And that to me is that's like an individual thing. Like I can't tell you, you know, Drew, 
your philosophy is whack. Like I cannot say that because you probably love being at events. You probably love the volume work monthly keeps you busy. And some folks don't want to leave the door to their house, their comfort zone, the couch that they paid for, if they're not making at least $800 for that event. So everyone has, of course, their own uh, philosophy as far as what is a successful business. Mm -hmm. In my eyes, I see that you've been staying stable for a full eight years, so you know what it takes. You have some key ingredients. Mm -hmm. What would you say helped you from year one to year two, if you can think that far back? Like, is there anything you started doing differently that brought in more events? And how was that for you? Yeah, man, I'm a firm believer in just double down on what's working. So again, back then, Craigslist, right. um, from year one to year two, we literally ended up with like 10 accounts and we're just reposting five, five posts a day. Mm -hmm. um, but it's different now, man. Craigslist isn't even there. It's not something I would even recommend someone to spend time on. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a totally, completely different game. But I think my growth really happened when the iPads were kind of introduced. Okay. Um, you know, as you know, we do drop-offs now, mainly okay. for all of our rentals. I would say 85, 90% of my events are just drop-offs. Um, that's if you asked me a month ago, but now we're completely doing drop-offs for everything. Okay. So what I love about this business, bro, is you can literally charge whatever you want. Okay. People back then, right, charging $1,000, mm -hmm. maybe it's not as easy to make that $1,000 on the way they're advertising, but... You know, as you know, there's people, there, man, there's some people making $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 dollars per event. Mm -hmm. You just have to know your clients. You have to know where those people are. And then you have to attack. You have to basically, you know, if you want the corporate events, go on LinkedIn, you know, run some Google ads or just be more progressive and just actually reach out to those companies, you know? Mm -hmm. um, as for me, I like doing the everyday event, man, the backyard birthday party, the quinceanera, the sweet 16, because I find more fulfillment in that. Mm -hmm. And I like being able to do more events because I actually love this business. Okay. Like, you know, everyone's always asking me like, would you ever quit this business? I'm like, absolutely not. I don't care what I'm doing here on YouTube or photo booth 101, whatever the case may be. If I had to choose, I'm, I'm going to stay with the photo booths, man, the rentals. That, so, that was amazing. Yeah. It's a, there's a lot that you put down right now. So I'm just going to uh, circle back to a few points that you brought up. One of the things that really caught my attention is you have now shifted to a full just drop off method, right? So this concept along your journey as a photo booth rental business owner, did you think to yourself, well, you know what? Let me start hiring employees because I do want to scale and I'm overbooked. Did you get to that point? In your yeah. Yeah. So and that's kind of, it was just timing and luck. We were at a point to where like, you know, if I want to do these, these events, I have to be there and I can't be in two places at one time. So it was just timing. That's when I, you know, we introduced the iPad booths and, um, I actually did my first drop off by accident, which is a funny story. We could, I could talk about that if you want to talk about it. Yeah. But, um, the, it, I had a decision to make, do I want to continue to, to just spend all my time at these events? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to grow and hire somebody? And I just don't want, I just don't think people will treat my business like I would. Mm. And I don't want to have to deal with people. So that was kind of what leaned us off of staying at events. And, um, you know, we had a wedding, uh, we did at a bar, which is kind of an unusual event already. So oh, to me, I'm like, this is kind of a sign that all this happened. Long story short, man, um, we, we had our iPad photo booth there. Um, I didn't have my ID, but the bartender, not the bartender, the uh, security guard was like, Hey, go ahead and set up, but you're going to have to come back to get your, uh, ID to stay here. I was like, no problem. Set up my photo booth. I went home, got my ID. And then while I was about to head back, I looked on the gallery. I'm like, Oh, they're already using the photo without booth you there without me there. Mm. So I'm like, this is interesting. Okay. So let me just go back and wait in the parking lot. <laughs> the event went perfectly, man. No issues. Um, I actually find it beneficial to not have anyone there. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm all about man s providing the value in my rental and how we structure everything as a plus mm -hmm. like to the customer. So if someone's having a wedding, I'm like, look, we're going to give you the photo booth all day at this low rate. No one will be there. So, you know, as a 360 owner, you have to sometimes set up mm -hmm. during the event, mm -hmm. which if, if you're talking to a, a bride, right, she might be like, I don't know if I want you at my ceremony coming in and setting up. So my benefit for the drop off is not only the price, but you will never see me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come at 11 a.m. when the venue opens and then I'll come after your event. Mm -hmm. So I just like finding the, the benefits and, and the pluses of the structure. And I think like with the drop off, there's a lot of things that you can't get from actually having to stay at an event. I do see a lot of benefits to the drop off concept. 
one, you don't have to deal with contractors or employees. Oh, yeah. Um, just like pros, there's cons to everything, right? So it's helped you maintain the business. And so you are staying afloat with the drop-off concept. Now, when busy season comes around, Drew, how busy is it for you as a drop-off uh, photo booth? You know, in, like that's what you're doing. It's you're installing booths at these events. Yeah. And now you have a lot of freedom to say, hey, man, I've been able to accumulate over five booths. Um, I can actually drop all these off in one day. Now, I'm I, I, I want to know, give me your best weekend ever, Drew. No exaggeration. Tell me about that experience of just the drop-off concept and how it paid off for you. Oh, I'll never forget it. 11 events in one day. Yeah, 11 events. And I think we cleared around seven seventy five hundred. What? Yeah, yeah. It was insane. Like, I everything was aligned. They got all of the upgrades. Everyone wanted backdrops. So... Even though I made this money, I did have to invest because I didn't have all of the equipment. It just so happened. I was like, look, I got to do this. I got to make it work. But yeah, it was a full day of driving. I honestly, I tell everyone, like, I feel like a high paid Uber driver yeah. and my passengers are photo booths. Mm. So it was, uh, I remember, I'll never forget it. My wife and I together, no employees. We just did it together. Okay. Um, I think we got up at like 7.30 a.m. And then we didn't get back home until like 2.30 a.m. 12 hours, past yeah. 12 hours. Yeah. Just driving around and and... Um, yeah, but it's, it's again, like I'll, I'll do it again. I mean, who, who's going to complain on making, you know, almost $8,000 in $8, one day. $8,000 in one day. How many booths shoot? That was 11 booths. 11 booths and just one, 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 uh, one car. Yeah. In a Prius. In a Prius. Everything fit. Dude, so yeah. I would say gas, but you're rolling in a Prius. In a Prius, man. Back. Dude, that is an amazing story. You know, I want to know more about you working with your wife as a partner. I mm -hmm. feel like a lot of folks come into the space and they usually have their significant other, some sort of partner, their wife, their girlfriend, boyfriend. And so I feel like what fine balance do you do you see in your relationship being in the business with your wife? I want to dive more into that because I did everything kind of solo. Mm -hmm. But since you have someone that you can trust and you can rely on, tell me a little bit about more of the, the dynamics in a relationship and starting a photo booth business. Yeah. Um... It, it's important to establish the roles. That was one thing I, w I, I made sure we sat down before we even thought of a business name or a business plan. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? And do are we aligned there? Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do things that she would be better in doing because right. that makes no sense. Right. You know, you, usually when you have a partner, they, they're supposed to fill in a weakness and vice versa. So, um, you know, and it's also too, like, you know, <laughs> it's going to sound cheesy, but I absolutely love my wife. We do everything together. So like it just made sense. And, um, you know, she personally handles all the creative stuff, the templates, the welcome screens, um, you know, everything creative she'll handle. But when it comes to sales and really trying to get the most from an event, mm -hmm. that's my job. And then when we go set up, um, we'll do it together most of the time. That's a fine yeah. balance because you need the creative side, the artistic side. And then you need the business management sales marketing side. And it yeah. sounds like you are more on the marketing sales side, right? Mm -hmm. Where does all this talent and experience come from before you even got started with the photo? Did you kind of learn on the fly? No, man. Uh, life experience running a bunch of other businesses. Okay. Um, man, I've done everything, dude. I've done Amazon FBA. I've had an Etsy store. I had vending machines, honor boxes, mobile car washing. So... Every little business requires different things, but it all comes down to cash flow, getting money into your business. It's the heartbeat of any business. If there's no money coming in, what's the point of being able to make a creative template or having a cool business name? So I know that the focus needs to be on getting money coming in mm -hmm. and um, just being able to manage, make yeah. more money coming in than you're spending. And um, that's that's just the mindset, man. That's something I've learned just, just from experience. Yes, yeah, so to, to piggyback off of that is... The way I see it is all those businesses that you had in the past, you didn't continue doing those businesses and you could have felt like a failure. But I think that all those businesses gave you some of the key ingredients to flourish in this business. A lot of people come into the space because it's a low entry level to get a booth and get started. But sooner or later, they're selling their booth on OfferUp, on Craigslist, oh, because yeah. they don't understand that there are characteristics and things that need to take place for you to actually succeed in this business, right, Drew? Mm -hmm. So for the person that is out there that has maybe $3,000, I know you say you're an iPad guy, right? What would you say 
to that person that has three thousand dollars that's on the sideline ready to jump in i say get your equipment get started and be a master of your software because that's one of the most important things and look if you can't afford a photo booth buying from a company or buying a used one make your own you know just get started you know there's there's always a market for everybody so I think iPad's the, the cheapest entry level, right. you know? And if you're making your own photo booth, if you already have an iPad, that's like the, gonna be one of the most expensive things that you buy if you're gonna build your own. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, if you're gonna buy from us, from Photo Booth 101, you could buy the Digi Booth, right? Mm -hmm. 1800 bucks, you can buy an iPad, 400 bucks, and then your software. Um, but I tell everyone, the best booth to get, it's the one that will allow you to start. Mm -hmm. I see way too many people saying, I'm gonna wait six months to afford this and that. Mm -hmm. If you can start today or tomorrow, you'll be surprised the amount of progress you can make in those six months. You'll, you'll probably end up making enough money to buy three of the booths that you plan on buying, not let alone six months of past customers, six months of reviews, six months of experience. Mm -hmm. Of it, and the experience rekindles your neural network and you start recalling moments like the time you made close to $8,000, like the time that the universe said, you know what, Drew? We're gonna make you forget your ID, bro, because <laughs> if we, can get that accomplished, then that'll open your eyes to the possibility of just doing the drop-off method. Mm -hmm. And I think that the universe has a very interesting way of rewarding you with thoughts and ideas when you're tuned in to receive that signal and that, that message that you can later on apply. Yeah. So it's good not to go to sleep with too many ideas, but instead actually taking action, right? As an entrepreneur, you've been all over the place, Amazon, FBA, uh, Uber, what made you stay long term in the photo booth space? Is it because you just you're, you're your own boss? You make the own rules, or tell me a little bit about that. It's the iPad booths, man. the The drop off literally made me realize there's an opportunity to make a lot of money in a short amount of time. Again, nothing. You're the 360 photo booth guy. That's you, right? And I totally love the way you approach your business. But to me, I don't like being at events. Yeah, I don't like the drunk people. I don't like the little kids. And I was at a point where I was getting burnt out, man. Yes. And then after that that uh, that drop off at that bar, I was like, I could really scale this thing. And there's an opportunity here. Mm -hmm. The software is really cheap. You know, the booths are affordable, portable. Mm -hmm. You know, when we did 11 events, I got to make this clear. It was the most DIY rig ever, man. Ring light from Amazon, piece of wood, and a DJ tripod. What? You would think 11 photo booths in a Prius that it would be jam packed. There was there was a room for like at least two more. Okay. Right. Backdrops, but, but yeah, man, the um, the drop off, man. I think it's I think it's the the most passive way to make money in this business. The second most passive. Second. This is like another thing, but we are actually doing something called the pickup now. Okay. Where people are coming to us, they're picking up the iPad photo booth, taking it to their events, and setting it up themselves. Yeah, you know who was doing that is uh, there's a guy and I don't know his his exact YouTube channel name. I think it's the the tent the tent guy. The tent guy. I love that guy. What's his name? I, it's the tent something. I don't know. Right. He's, yeah. he's, uh, he's partnered up with another guy and they, the content that he puts out is, is so funny because it's, he, he's a do it yourself kind of guy, but now he's scaled to, he has like a bunch of employees, has a bigger warehouse. Yeah. So big ups to him. So that, that's okay. Drop off concept, Drew. Now, where do you see yourself? I would say at least two years from now with the amount of people coming into the space and you just staying innovative and creative. Yeah. Um, my goal is to provide as much, well, as a content creator, to pro provide as much value, okay. but to also get the most out of the drop-off okay. and to provide the most value for people that want to provide this type of service. Um, I think we're there, man. I think we're on the way. Um, yeah, I, I, I just think it's, it's just going to come with time. You know, um, one thing that we've done to help our own rental business and what I'm teaching other people to do is to stop spending so much time on templates. Mm -hmm. And I think my audience is more geared to maybe people working 40 hours a week that don't want to have a job that feels like a job, mm -hmm. you know, spending five hours staying at an event or four hours. So just trying to find ways to, to, to make it easier for everybody. And um, one thing we're going to be doing soon is uh, using a company that basically has pre-made templates mm -hmm. and then you just buy a lifetime access. I forgot the name of the company, but it, uh, a good friend of mine is launching it. But long story short, we're not going to be making templates anymore. As you know, sometimes those templates can take you 45 minutes to an hour if you're making it custom yeah. with revision. So 
just trying to find ways to to save time. That's pretty much it in two years. Let's talk about it. Things that you can automate, Drew. Yeah. What are some things that you have started automating that you weren't doing back then? What systems are you using? What softwares are helping you run uh, run efficiently, lean and clean um, throughout your business journey here? Oh man, HoneyBook. You use yeah. HoneyBook? Tell yeah. me a little bit about HoneyBook. HoneyBook is a CRM tool, client relation management tool. Hope, hopefully I said that right. Mm -hmm. um, it's a software that will literally automate everything and keep all of the stuff about your customers booking in one place to where we can wake up in the morning with a booking. They paid the deposit, they filled out the template form, contract is ready to be signed and all of that. Um, that saves us on average, probably a solid 10 to 15 minutes, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're doing a hundred plus events, mm -hmm. it's a big deal. And then also keeps all of the emails, right? All of the conversations between you and the client in one place, okay. as I'm sure you know, right? Mm -hmm. um, before we had HoneyBook, we would miss things because if you're going in the email chain and sometimes the client will email you a separate email mm -hmm. and you miss stuff. So to be able to have that has been super clutch. Okay. And as far as payments go, HoneyBook just launched a thing where you can charge late fees. So you set up the payments, right? You could say, um, the payment for the photo booth has to be due on this date. And if they miss it, mm -hmm. HoneyBook will add a fee. And mm -hmm. you can also get tipped on HoneyBook too, which is pretty cool. Okay. So yeah. HoneyBook, that's one major software that's definitely doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you and your wife. Mm -hmm. What else are you using as far as, because I know you, you, you come from a sales and marketing side. What are you using to market your business? A lot of people either run ads on Facebook, on Google, on Instagram, now TikTok. What strategies are working best for you? Oh, this is a great question. Um, it's probably going to be unpopular and so not something people want to hear. It's, it's the networking. Um, that is what a, a thing I, I, heard, I saw online the other days. If you want to go fast, you go by yourself. And that could be running ads, posting on Facebook groups. But if you want to go far, you go with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's what's paid us the most reaching out to venues and DJs, wedding planners, event coordinators. And what works best for me is when I'm making this communication, like opening up the conversation. I don't start it off with saying, hey, I'd like for you to refer customers to me, or I want this, I want this, I want this. Everything is about value here. I want to start the email off with, this is what I can provide you. This is what I can do for your customers that will help you. Mm -hmm. And whether that's one free event, you know, even, even though we make $100,000 a year dropping off photo booths, I'm still doing events for free. Yeah. If I see the potential, right? If it's, it's for a venue and I know that this venue is being booked, it's a higher end venue, I'm more than happy to say, let me prove myself. And then after the fact, I'm going to give your customers, people that book you here, $200 worth of free upgrades that they can only get because they're booking through you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's really helped for sure. We get a lot of referrals now because once you've been in the game for a while, yes. you can kind of sit back and just kind of, you know, not expect, but you can kind of rely on those repeat customers, those referrals. Mm -hmm. And then another thing I love about the drop-offs, right? If you have a 360 booth or a mirror booth and you're staying there, if you're not having an employees, if you're lucky, you can do two events. Mm -hmm. I did 11 in one day. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to have more repeat customers, more referrals. And in the long run makes, to me, my photo booth company more, not like valuable, but I guess you could say that, mm -hmm. you know, because if I'm able to do five, six times the amount of events as a normal operator, mm -hmm. I'm having more referrals. I'm getting more repeat customers. So 